childbirth violence and this is violence that most Kenyans don't know about. It is called obstetric violence. Obstetric violence is, viol is violence that is melted upon women during childbirth, after childbirth and even during labor. This violence most of the time is experienced by mothers and their spouses. But then have you ever thought why a mother would carry a child for nine months, deliver that child, and deposit that child in a bush somewhere, or throws the baby into the pit rack tree? Okay, there are many other socioeconomic factors that would make a mother do that. But for me, my approach is different. My approach is, could be this mother has suffered postpartum depression. And that depression forces the mother to reject, naturally reject that child. Have you ever heard of a story of a mother who went through labor in a hospital, delivered a baby, but refused to breastfeed completely? Some of them are even beaten by colleagues in the ward so that they can agree to breastfeed. Others are forced to uh, breastfeed by health providers, healthcare providers. Maziwa itolewe, dio mtoto apate maziwa. To me, I don't see that as a, a socio-economic factor. I see it as a psychological factor. Um, and this is something that we may need to discuss, talk about it, and see how we can help our mothers so that we can uh, reduce the occurrence of what I call obstetric violence. There are many mothers who have reported that when they went for delivery, they were verbally abused, they were tortured. Others have even complained that the doctors forced them into coerced uh, 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 practices. I mean, they were taken into the ward without their um, consent. Others were not even disclosed to what is it that uh, the conditions they have. For example, maybe um, you have a breach and you're not told that you have a breach until that very moment that you need to go to the theatre and you are forced to sign forms, your husbands and spouses are forced to sign forms so that uh, you don't lose the baby or the mother. Uh, so all that kind of treatment that violates the rights of our mothers during childbirth is what we call obstetric violence. Have you ever even asked yourself why a doctor would not tell you that you are racist negative until that very day when you'll be going for delivery and they start threatening you that you know we cannot admit you because this hospital we don't have enough uh, blood bank for your racist. Why would you wait until that very moment when the mother is due for delivery yet you've been seeing this child, I mean this mother for a long time and you've not disclosed. I am not here to victimize anybody, but I'm here to speak about a subject that people don't speak about. They actually talk about um, things that really do not uh, uh, get clear and clearly understood by mothers. Now, there are so many mothers who have gone for delivery and they've been told that their blood groups are, are very rare, like race as negative, and you are told before you book yourself for delivery, end out a foot and down. Sasa unashanga, utaenda kutafuta damu wapi. And this mother starts getting worried. Because they have not even been told kwa nini unaambiwa uende utafute damu. Unaanza kufikiria labda mtoto wako hana damu ya kutosha, atakufa. And you start getting emotionally disturbed, psychologically disturbed. And that can also lead to postpartum depression. Let me give you a short story. And as a mother, when I speak about this, I get very emotional. In 2021, a friend of mine called me in the morning and told me, Ebu angalia nani, vile nani ya liandika kwa Facebook yake. We had a mutual friend who posted on her Facebook that she has been given or she's been blessed with a baby girl. And then she said, unfortunately, this girl is going to replace my life. And so we were wondering, why did she post that? And we started calling each other and saying, we need to go and check what's going on. And you know, Sisi wa mama, tukisema tunaenda kuona mama ambaye mejifungua, tunajitarichanga. We don't just run. So in the process of kuji, panga tunde tukamuone, this girl committed suicide. And the husband got himself into a lot of shit because he interfered with the whole scenario. Not because he wanted, but he wanted to cover up 
because he didn't want to be seen like he's the one who abandoned or he, he did not do what he was supposed to have done to rescue this girl. But this girl died. And then he started very serious legal uh, issues. But for me, I kept telling this family, let us not just rush into conclusions. We need to ask ourselves whether this girl was going through postpartum depression. And it is true, she was going through serious depression. Before she posted on Facebook that she's going to be replaced by her young baby, she had indicated to so many people that she's, she's, she's thinking, she's contemplating suicide. And no one thought that a mother who has come from a, you know, a good hospital, had des has delivered a baby, has a good husband, has a good home, had a good job, by the way, she was actually a medical practitioner, would actually think of committing suicide immediately after her childbirth. And by the way, this was not her first born. She was actually getting her third child. And she, she committed suicide and died. And there are so many women watching me now, so many women following me, who have gone through once or twice postpartum depression. That is the period where ukipata mtoto utaki kuona hata baba ya mtoto. Yaani ni kama amekukosea. Hata kuna wazee wamepotea boma immediately after childbirth. Ni kwa sababu mama amekuwa mkali, amehaeleweki, hatosheki, hakuli, haogi. In fact I was reading the other day on X I was reading about a friend of mine who I follow so much on X who just got a baby the other day. And she's a celebrity, by the way. She said she took three, it took her three days to shower after the delivery room. Three days, yes. And she can't explain why she had to take three days to shower. These are signs of a woman who is going through postpartum depression. Now, when you are in the labor ward, immediately after delivery, nurses may not understand what you're going through. So when you refuse to breastfeed your child, they come and beat you up. Others, they press your teeth to make sure that they remove milk for your baby. Others, they will harass you. They will send even medical practitioners to come and force you to go and shower, force you to eat, and even, you know, throw verbal attacks on you. I think this is the right time for us to combine forces and speak about obstetric violence. That is the violence that is melted on upon women who are going through labor, who are going through delivery and after delivery. By the way, actually, who is it? Ushawa is here, Mama Kisama, and it's up on my coffee, you are told. Ati push the baby, pa, unarongwa. Push the baby, pa. And people laugh about it. They think as that is a normal way of child delivery. No, nobody should slap your back so that you can push the baby. No, that is violence. There are even women who say that they had to be scared so that they can push the baby. There are doctors who bang doors when the baby is coming out so that you can get scared and you push the baby out. <laughs> that is violence. So most women have been suffering silently. And most women do not talk about it because they think it's like it's so private so you don't talk about it. So can I say that we have normalized violence against women during childbirth? We must stop normalizing that violence. Sasa mimi kama mjumbe na mama ambaye amepitia hayo na mengi nimeamua ya kwamba nitaongoza wamama wa Kenya na nashukuru sana kwa sababu hata wamama wa bunge wameniunga ili tufanye kazi ya kuelimisha wananchi maneno ya OBV Hiyo campaign tunaiita heshimu uzazi stop obstetric violence stop O B V. Nimetoa hizi vijitabu. Hizi vijitabu tunapeana kwa mahospitali. Wale wa mama wajawazito wanafaa wasome hizi vijitabu ili uelewe at what point should the doctor not do 1 2 3. At what point should the nurse not do to you 1 2 3. What information should you know? For example, you should know your blood group before you sign forms to go to the theater for baby delivery. Na kama wewe uko na blood group ambayo inafaa iwe na blood bank ya kutosha uelezewe mapema. There are so many things you need to know before you sign forms to go to theater or to go to the delivery room. That is why I'm here. Mimi ningetaka tushikane na wewe. Unisaidie wewe baba, wewe mama. Unisaidie tuelimishe wa mama, tuelimishe madaktari, tuelimishe nurses and healthcare providers. 
ya kwamba hii OBV isipochungwa inafanya wamama wengi sana wajidharau wakatae kutunza watoto wao wengine wana neglect na wana abandon watoto wachanga infants na wengine wana commit suicide you know the other day i was speaking to my friend who went through theater a c section and this was her first child and she did not want ever to have a scar you know kuenda kwa c section theater lazima ukatwe na ukikatwa ukishonwa ikipona utakuwa na scar she was so beautiful and she did not believe that she needed to have a scar on her belly so she didn't want to go through c section so she resisted c section for a long time every time she went to the hospital the doctor told her your baby is not uh, is not is so big oh we don't think you can deliver this baby normally but she refused and they agreed with the doctor we are going to give you an opportunity to try to deliver normally and should you have a problem then we shall revert to c section but the day she reported her due date and she reported to hospital she found the doctor had already prepared all the forms and she was not given the opportunity to push the baby she was told we are waiting for you for c section she just got shocked and that shock really ate onto her child delivery session and she today feels that the doctor did not give her the opportunity to give her uh, to give to give her body an opportunity to give birth normally now that happens so many other times mother say that they are being coerced to go to the hospital for c section not because for the economic part of it but because of their social emotional upkeep they feel like they were violated have you ever felt like you are violated did you feel like you're not treated fairly when you went for your baby delivery do you feel there's something that was done to you that was not, was not supposed to be done to you do you feel like you're not given the right to be heard on what you wanted during child delivery and that is why that is why i am here i am here to speak about things that mothers don't speak because they are shy i am here to discuss things that nurses don't tell you and doctors don't tell you but i'm not here to victimize anyone i am not victimizing anyone i am trying to say we have a problem and all of us collectively must identify the problem look for interventions and solutions and provide them to our mothers mothers have a right according to the kenyan constitution to be treated fairly and to be respected and therefore we must entrench respectable maternity motherhood in kenya from the ministry's perspective to the hospital's administrative which i posted on the my request was posted uh, to the national assembly a year ago and it is there on the order paper of kenyan's uh, parliamentary uh, activities since last year may it is sad that we give priorities to all other and therefore matters child labor and delivery are very pertinent in this country i hope that when this motion is debated in parliament we are going to get the ministry to come up with a policy a national policy that is going to guide and give us protocols that we are going to use if a mother reports violation of her rights during childbirth hebu niambie wewe huwa unasikiaje ukiangalia television unaona wamama wanapata watoto wakiwa watatu kwa kitanda kimoja hebu niambie huwa unasikiaje ukiona watoto wanaozaliwa na wamama wajawazito ambao wako na ulemavu na wa, wanadhulumiwa kijinsia wanadhulumiwa eh, because of you know their biological presentation I think it's time for us to collectively own up and say there's a problem in Kenya on matters dignified maternity child care and we need to accept that there are loopholes loopholes that we need to fill up and cover up we must accept that there are interventions that are critically needed so that we can be able to help our mothers in matters child delivery and child birth and therefore I together with many other women we have come up with a campaign called Heshimu Uzazi Stop Obstetric Violence and that campaign has been running and it has been running through social media somebody is trying to ring me and my phone is disconnecting i hope it's still on um and this campaign can only get out there if you amplify from where you're watching me from you need to speak to somebody about obv by the way let me tell you the people who suffer obv more are not even women they are the men 
Can you imagine a man who has gone to the delivery room with his wife in Kenya? Na anasikia nduru ambazo zinapigwa huko kwa ward na matusi ambayo inakuanga huko kwa delivery room. Do you think that man would come out the way he went in? Men suffer. It's only that they don't speak. There is one who told me he went in the delivery room one day and he will never go back <laughs> because of what he had. Not what he saw, what he had. Nurses say anything they want to say in those words. Abusing women who are screaming. And I don't think that is right. Husbands should be given the opportunity to witness the birth of their children if they so wish. And therefore, I would want us to agree that uh, there's much that needs to be done. Now, I have joined with very many organizations and I am grateful that I have so many organizations that have come on board to help us to uh, amplify this campaign called Stop OBV. There are nurses that work as a group in organizations and associations who have accepted that there's a problem and they want to look for solutions and interventions. There are teachers who have come together and have realized that they need to amplify their voices around matters of obstetric violence and matters to do with child delivery. There are doctors, association of doctors that have come together. And I want to specifically thank Figo under the leadership of Dr. Professor Anne, uh, Anne, uh, Anne uh, um, I'm forgetting her name, Dr. Anne, the, the world president of FIGO. Thank you so much for the support and the, and the technical support that you have given us. I want to thank the Association of Kenya Nurses for giving us the opportunity to work with you. I want to thank AMREF and many other organizations that have played one part here and there to support this campaign. Now, my campaign is not only talking to you about issues and, uh, uh, and, and matters that happen in your hospital, but first of all, to identify that we need a national policy that is going to guide us on how we are going to deal with the matters of obstetric violence and how we are going to provide protocols on such matters. You know, the other day I was called to Mama Lucy Kibaki Hospital. And I had gone to help a lady, a young lady, who claimed and alleged that her baby was stolen. She apparently knew she was carrying twins, but she was given one child. And she was asking, where did the other one go? And we went through many procedures and processes to make sure that we identified the problem and provided a solution. Unfortunately, we did not provide a solution because that lady was, present, was presented with a dead child and I was told this is your child who died during labor. There are so many cases like those of people claiming that their children were either exchanged or they were, they were stolen and they were presented to uh, dead bodies as their children after labor. I don't think this is something that can be, so, can be sorted out by governors, no, or MPs, no, or doctors, no, or courts, no. I think we need a framework, and that is why I'm talking about a national policy. We need to know, if such a situation happens, whom do we run to? How do lawyers come in? How do hospitals behave? Because to now, I'm not going to hospital. When you go to hospital, you can complain, you can go to hospital. Should we go to court and get a court order so that we can come and ask what happened? You know, those are the issues that I'm talking about. And I'll be glad to have you join us. If you are able to join us to help us amplify this voice and join this campaign, Stop OBV in Kenya, I am glad that I have so many of you joining in. Please come, let's work together. I am sure you can get in touch with me through those social media platforms, the X account, my personal account, Gadoni Wamushomba, and many other platforms that we have. And we have a special page on X called Stop Obstetric violence. We also have a special page on Facebook called Stop Obstetric Violence, Heshimu Uzazi. I will be moving to the ground with a team of very many technical supporters that we have. Some of them ready to come and educate women, pregnant women, on the do's and the, and the don'ts when you go for labor and what you should do immediately after childbirth. How I pray that postpartum depression and many other challenges that 
um, that develop after. Mismanagement of that whole process will be sorted out. I am also hopeful that the prevalence rates that we have in Kenya of postpartum depression will go down. Currently, we are talking about 11 to 15 percent of women in Kenya who go through childbirth suffer postpartum depression. We are also hoping that 7% of the women who go through delivery and are resus negative will be prepared prior delivery. Because most women who are resus negative, like myself, do not know what to do before. They only wait to be told what to do. If the doctor forgets, forgets one of the procedures that are supposed to be done before you deliver your child, you get yourself in a lot of problems in the future. That is why I'm here to speak about these issues that surrounds matters of respectable childbirth in Kenya. My name is Gadoni Wabushoma. I hope to be back to dissect and discuss with you more on obstetric violence in Kenya. And by the way, OBV has not been acknowledged in Kenya. We have not acknowledged this as a form of violence. We have sexual violence, we have gender-based violence, we have domestic violence, but we have never acknowledged obstetric violence as a form of violence in Kenya. And that is why we need to go to Parliament and debate this matter so that we can move to the next level. Asantini sana. And I'll be open to inboxes for people who want to know more. If you want to know more, you can inbox me on my social, uh, social media pages. I am going to respond to you and get in touch with you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.